What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. All right, guys, today I have one of the most highly anticipated Jordan 1s that has come out so far in 2020. Everybody's been trying to get their hands on this. I was lucky enough to win an in-store raffle to get my hands on a pair. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. We got a lot to talk about. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the women's Air Jordan 1 High OG tie-dye. This right here, this is the one. This is the one that everybody was trying to get. This is the one that everybody is still trying to get. This is the one that's going for over $300 right now on the resale markets, depending on what size you have. Now, like I mentioned, I was lucky enough to actually win this pair from Hibbits. So shout out to Hibbits for that. That was dope. I actually was able to get my size, which is a 10 and a half in women's, a size nine in men. Unfortunately, this sneaker was not for the Bigfoot guys because this was a women's exclusive. Of course, technically it's supposed to be for the women, but a lot of the Bigfoot guys were upset because a lot of men wanted to get their hands on this sneaker as well. If you were lucky enough for your foot to be able to even fit in this sneaker, that was one part of it. And then you had to be lucky enough to even get your hands on the sneaker. That was the second part of it. Luckily, I was lucky enough to do both. So let's take a little deeper look at the sneaker. And then we're going to talk about the really, really dope history behind the shoe because I don't think a lot of people really understand how much history is in this sneaker. It goes back to the early 90s. So let's get into it. All right, now starting with the upper here, there's honestly not a lot to talk about with the shoe itself. I mean, it's a white, black, and aurora green colorway. Of course, as you can see, it's tie-dye all throughout the upper of the sneaker here, going all around the collar, all around the heel, all the way down the eyelids, and of course, wrapping around the toe box. Now, we got to take a little closer inspection of this material on the tie-dye. Now, it is leather, but it feels like frayed leather. A couple of people have already talked about the quality of it, and it actually feels very nice, but you can actually see there's a stark difference here between the two kinds of leathers that are on the upper of the sneaker. Now, you have a little bit of this nicer, more premium leather right above this more frayed leather. And then of course you get a little bit more of that nicer leather poking out right between the quarter panels and the collar of the sneaker here. Really like that touch too. I actually think one of the interesting characteristics that they give to women's sneakers is the satin lining inside of the sneaker here. As you can see on the inside of the shoe, that's the difference. Men, we usually get kind of that rougher, uh, it almost feels like a netting almost inside of the shoe here. It's soft, but it, it ain't smooth like this. This is really nice satin lining on the inside of the sneaker here. So I think that's a big difference here between the men's and the women's Jordan 1 OGs. But you also get the classic black embossed ball and wings logo on the lateral side of the shoe. Moving down from the tie-dye portion all around the upper of the sneaker here, you get a really nice white quarter panel, really, really clean looking with a really nice black swoosh. Looking at a top down look at the sneaker here, you see you have this plain black tongue, plain black toe box, but really, really nice accents with the tie dye going all around the toe box as well. Really like how they went back to that old school Nike Air Jordan 1 OG tag. I actually think this was the preference of a lot of people from what I've been hearing. So it's good that they didn't use the leather tag on this. They actually kept it pretty, pretty OG. White midsole on the sneaker, really clean, nothing different there and a really nice black outsole on the sneaker here so you got that kind of oreo cookie effect you got the black outsole the white midsole and then the black going down the upper of the sneaker of course accented by this really nice tie-dye last but certainly not least i don't know if you guys can see that but it was kind of hard to take it out so i'm gonna leave it in there plain black insole with the white nike air branding on the heel and that's actually pretty much it when it comes to the shoe. The sneaker itself is pretty basic. Now, this will be the time where everybody would spin these sneakers around for the next seven minutes and tell you guys that these are really, really dope. But obviously you don't get that over here at Sneaker Fetish. Let's get into the history behind this sneaker. Let's talk a little bit about the inspiration behind it because personally, I love these little stories about Michael Jordan. I love these little, these little facts about history, about MJ. During a time where all we really thought we knew about him was how well he was playing basketball, but he had a little bit of a goofy side about him too. And these shoes actually tell that story. All right, let's take it all the way back to May of 1992. Sports Illustrated for Kids got Michael Jordan on the cover of their magazine for the second time. The first time, actually being their debut copy of the magazine. I believe that was back in the late 80s. Don't quote me on that, but I wanna say it was 89-ish. In any event, in May of 1992, if you guys remember, that was back when Michael Jordan was right on the cusp of coming into his second NBA championship back to back. They had just won back in 91, and now they were going for a second one in 92, but Michael actually took the time to go and visit the Sports Illustrated for Kids offices to do a cover shoot for a magazine that they called Michael Mania. Now, if you guys remember that cover, he 
actually had on his full Bulls uniform. He had a couple of kids with him that also had on some Jordan stuff as well. I think one had on some hair sevens, one had on some Bordeaux sevens. But Mike was dressed pretty normal. He looked like the superstar that he was at the time. It really was Michael Mania back in 1992. Mike was on fire. He was everywhere. So of course, Sports Illustrated for Kids wanted to get him in the magazine as well. But here's something that you may or may not have known about that photo shoot. They actually were able to get Mike to dress up in a whole bunch of different costumes during the photo shoot before they took the official photo for the magazine cover. They dressed Mike up like a rock star and put a really crazy yellow wig on him. They dressed him up as a grandma. You may have seen that picture before, like he was knitting something. And they dressed him up like a hippie with an afro, some round glasses on, and a tie-dye t-shirt. I think they even dressed Mike up like a cowboy as well. But the interesting thing about the hippie picture that I personally noticed was that it's actually the only picture out of all of those that you can't see any of Mike's Bulls uniform in the photo. Even when he was pictured as a cowboy, you could see a little bit of his jersey popping out underneath the outfit. But in the hippie photo with the tie-dye t-shirt on, you couldn't see any of his outfit at all. And in the photo where he's dressed up like a hippie throwing up the peace sign, you'll notice that the tie-dye t-shirt is the exact same colors as the tie-dye print used on the tie-dye Jordan 1s. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where the inspiration came from behind the tie-dye Jordan 1. It wasn't just something random that they decided to come up with at Jordan brand. It actually had a story behind it if you go back in the archives. Now, I also wanna say something very interesting about Jordan brand at the time and Jordans as a whole at the time. I found it really dope that even back then, Nike and Jordan brand were doing an amazing job of branding Michael Jordan and doing product placement, both in movies, television, shows and in print. Like I mentioned before, they had a couple of kids that were in that cover shoot with him as well, also wearing Jordans. And that was a really big thing about Nike and Jordan brand back in the day. They wanted everybody to feel like Mike and everybody wanted to be like Mike. So the best way to make that happen is to put sneakers on the kids that look just like us. I was six years old in 1992. So obviously I didn't know a whole lot of what was going on at the time. All I saw was this larger than life basketball player and he had these nice shoes on and I didn't know what that was about. But like I mentioned, you see Air Jordans on a lot of people back in the day. You saw them on shows like Boy Meets World. If you guys remember, Corey used to wear Air Jordans on the show. Jerry Seinfeld, he used to wear Air Jordans on Seinfeld all the time. Nike did a lot of product placement there. Nike always had this little subtle product placement that they were putting Jordans and different sneakers in and things of that nature. So it always got ingrained into us that we wanted to be like Mike and we had to wear the Jordans too. Pretty clever marketing on Nike and Jordan brands part because to this day, obviously it is still working. And these sneakers pay homage to one of the most exciting times in basketball and in Michael Jordan's career. But if you were able to get your hands on a pair of these, congratulations to you. There was a ton of demand on it and not nearly as much stock to satisfy all the demand on this sneaker. So hopefully you guys don't have to pay too crazy of a price for it, but these are pretty nice. I will admit. Now, demand on this sneaker has been extremely high. Unless you guys have been underneath a rock somewhere, you know that everybody and their grandmama has been trying to get their hands on a pair of the tie-dyes. So, what I wanna know from you guys is, were you able to get your hands on a pair of the tie-dyes or are you still searching for a pair? Are you looking to pay the resale price of that $300 plus price tag on it? Or are you gonna have to do a hard pass on these? Let me know down below. Of course, write it down in the comments. Make sure that you Click on that subscribe button so that we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Jordan 1 OG tie-dye. And until next time, I'm out.